Welcome to a well-designed business with your host, Luan Nigara. Luan has a lifetime of experience building a multi-million dollar business with her husband and cousin, and she knows the challenges you face in your interior design business. Luann brings you real-life answers to your most pressing problems, as well as practical strategies to explode your interior design business. So, let's get to the business of interior design. Hi, welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. Kathy Kuo joins me on the show today. Kathy is an open, high-energy person and an extremely talented interior designer, as well as a rock star businesswoman that I am sure you are going to love. You might already know her through her Instagram, and even if you do, here is a bit more background on Kathy. Kathy is the founder of the online boutique, Kathy Quo Home. In addition to being an interior designer, Kathy is a wife, mother, cook, and a world traveler. She was born in Taiwan, and she was raised in Boston, and she now lives in New York City. She graduated from the Rhode Island School of Interior Design, and she has traveled to over 30 countries. She was recently uh, the st- starred in the FYI Network's Row House Showdown. Kathy's designs have been featured in Architectural Digest, El Decor, and other lifestyle publications. And today, along with discussing her career and her design firm, she is going to tell us about Kathy Quo Home and how it can help you in your interior design firm. So sit tight while I tell you a little bit about our sponsor, and then I'll be right back to introduce you to Kathy. My great thanks to MyDoma Studio, our podcast sponsor. What is MyDoma Studio? Well, you know, as busy interior designers, that running your own design firm isn't just about designing. That's what we talk about here all the time, right? There's managing contracts, clients, payments, products, and a million other things that you have to have locked down. It is challenging, but you must run your firm efficiently so you can do the fun, creative things you enjoy so much. And that's where My Doma Studio comes in. I'd like to invite you to try my doma studio today go to mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business designers around the world are using my doma studio what about you let my doma studio help you organize the business side and spend more time on the designing side of your firm i'd also like to share with you that vin bill and myself are so impressed with my doma studio that we have invested in this company so see for yourself what my doma studio can do for your your interior design business. And if you visit using the link mydomastudio.com slash a well-designed business, you will receive a special offer just for you as listeners of the podcast. Hi, Kathy. Thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Hi, Luann. How are you? Thanks so much for having me. I'm great. Thank you. And I just learned a second ago off air. Well, first of all, I told everybody in in the introduction about your business, your Kathy Quo home and your design bar and everything else. But I just learned a second ago that you actually started your e-commerce site 10 years ago. And yeah. yeah, and I just like, I asked you if you were the very first one to do it in this field. <laughs> yeah. and, and you said that you weren't, but that just seems so forward thinking to me. And I just thought, let's just start there a little bit because Kathy Quo Home really is a very beautiful, very well built out site at this oh, point. Thank you. Yes, it definitely is. And I'm just curious, I mean, you, you, you are and were an interior designer at the time. What was the brainchild in your mind? What was the impetus for beginning this huge e-commerce site that became Kathy Quo Home? Perfect. So um, to answer your question, I have, well, my background is in furniture and interior design. And I remember when I first started out, I was like, wow, there's like really nothing for me to buy out there. Um, I recall, you know, sort of looking around, there was Ethan Allen, there was Pottery Barn, but like, where were the trade showrooms? And if I could get myself to a trade showroom, I couldn't basically have easy access to, to get the product. Like it was very sort of archaic. I had to physically go to a trade showroom, take my client there or like take photos of it and email it over. It was just very, very sort of time consuming. So that was when I was like, hey, it would be interesting to put this all online. Now, the only idea that I had of of an online business at that point was like eBay. Like that was it. Like eBay Mm. was the only thing that existed. (laughs) And I was like, hmm, 
maybe there's like something there to be, you know, to be said. Um, interestingly enough, that actually was my first store. It was actually on eBay. Um, mm. So I like figured out how to sort of list an item, so on and so forth. And, you know, 10 years later, we are, we are here today. <laughs> but um, So it's kind of, you're right. When I think back, you know, 10 years ago, you really did. It really was a very brutal process. <laughs> I mean, you had to, like you said, you had to go traipse it into the D&D or the A&D building, obviously, depending on the part of the country you're in, but you and I are both here in the New York area. And, you know, like you said, trail your customer along, your client along, or, you know, take pictures. I mean, I, I remember the day we used to take Polaroid pictures of things and bring them back totally. to people. <laughs> oh my gosh, totally. And I would travel and I would actually have to hand carry all my Polaroid pictures <laughs> and my cameras in a separate bag to not go into the x-ray. And like, they would all look at me being like, why do you have so much film with you? Like, what are you doing? And <laughs> I anyway. can't even believe that you're old enough to have done Polaroid pictures. I didn't expect you to say, yeah, you I, too. No, I actually remember and we had to clip them onto these silly forms and like hand write out like the material, the weight, the thin- I mean, crazy, crazy yes, talk. Yes, yes. But yeah, I do re- recall those days. So what I think, what I'm always impressed with somebody like yourself, and I've interviewed many, many people over the last year and a half with the podcast that are just like you, where here you are experiencing the same pain as your fellow interior designers, but instead of just trudging through this pain and waiting for the world to figure it out, you're like, you know what? I think I'm going to put an end to this. Let me do something about it. (laughs) And that's remarkable to me when somebody does that. I just adore that. So, so tell me, Kat, so you, yeah, no. So your first, your first go out at you, you describe how you put it on eBay and what do you, what do you, what do you do? Because of course, again, you, other than the um, travel and so forth, I guess some of the other things you sort of alluded to what was so difficult in those days was that a lot of times as an interior designer, you couldn't just go into a bigger furniture trade showroom and buy a one-off, right? You had to sort of open an account and have minimums yeah. and things, right? right? right, right so right. that was another hurdle. And so what happens now? You, you, do you go to manufacturers and ask them if you could be the middle, the guy in the middle, or do you just buy it from them? Like, well, how did you, how do you do that? Like, what did you do? <laughs> um, a lot of begging to start. And then now it's sort of like they're all emailing and calling us now, you know, right. 10 years later. But um, initially, like you have to sort of like put your head like mindset and like 10 years ago, like the furniture and home decor industry and even somewhat of it, it is today is very um, retail oriented. So they don't understand the whole concept of like, I want to buy one piece. Right. It's like, no, 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 no. Like you want to buy $3,500 worth of this one chair so I can put it onto a pallet. It's like, no, no, no. Like, I don't want to do that. So a lot of it was sort of like working with our smaller dealers and sort of convincing them that like, you know, we can grow with your business and we can help you and we can drive some serious volume and and like literally showing them like, these are the amount of click through conversions we have on our site. Like, this is the reasons why you should allow us to show your product. And initially, you know, there was a lot of, yeah, no, yeah, we're not just not ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. But you know, times have really, really changed. I will say probably in the last two to three years, there's been a significant ramp up um, of our, you know, manufacturing community and, you know, the, the trade community sort of understanding and being comfortable with shopping for furniture and home decor online. Um, You know, I sort of had to like, as I was growing this business, I was definitely, you know, working full-time jobs, like sort of like, this was like, I was moonlighting this on the side. Yes. It was your side hustle. (laughs) That's totally my side hustle. Um, and did like all sorts of, you know, like corporate jobs, non-corporate jobs, startup jobs. I mean, all these things in between, uh, while I was still sort of like teaching myself how to, um, you know, like be successful at running an online business. And when I say be successful, I mean, having like five products online, like, like how do we just have a website that works and turns on, right. um, and maybe a checkout function would be cool. You know? <laughs> so that's basically like where we started. I mean, this was very, a very, very organic process, um, while doing interior design on the side and got, I had so many side hustles on the side. I mean, I was modeling, I was like this and that, and the other thing. <laughs> 
I was like, my business card would have been like, you know, like <laughs> internet entrepreneur slash model slash like, oh, I took photographs and I was selling them at government center. Like I was a photographer. I was, it was crazy. Uh, but, well, you're obviously driven. That's for sure. And, and that's really the part that's really intriguing me because just listening to you talk about having a site with like actually a live site with five items and possibly a checkout function. I mean, younger designers listening now, it's a widget. It, there's just, like you just Google, how do I have a checkout function on my website? And it's like, here, put this widget in and make a click and three clicks and you have a checkout function. I mean, this was not the case 10 years ago. Oh no. Oh no. Like before we like back in the day, you'd go to like (laughs) monstertemplates.com and you would buy a template for, I think $50 and you'd have to reskin the whole thing. But it was very much like, like a website was very much like informative only, but now there's like Shopify and Magento and like OS commerce and all these, you know, amazing sort of easy, plug and play, right. you know, startup friendly um, websites that you could literally like make jewelry tonight and have it for sale tomorrow. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I know. And so- I'm just like, I really want to make sure that, you know, that's why I brought up this whole part of it that you started it 10 years ago, because it really, look, I don't care that you weren't the first one. It was cutting edge then. I mean, it was, yeah. you know, a whole, yeah. t- it's hard to do it today with all of oh, the like- conveniences of what's happened online. And like you said, the different platforms that you could just go to and, and upload or download or whatever these darn things are that you do but then that was a big process so I commend you because to ha- like I said many designers experience those same trials and challenges with having to schlep to showrooms and having you know to be turned away because they weren't going to do a minimum but you know you sat there and said darn it I'm going to do something about it so you know very right. cool for you Kathy <laughs> thank you yes. I'm going to also say that like ironically because there was like nothing that you could buy like off the shelf back in the days we actually custom built our site from the ground up like really you know truly understanding the architecture of the site and how to scale up and scale down wow. um, and so basically everything that you see on our site today is completely unique and proprietary to us and it's given us a lot of tremendous freedom to be able to you know what I don't like that color shut it down super fast like we don't have to rely on developers like and third-party developers to help us with anything everything is done in-house so yeah super 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 great that we had to go through that pain you know that pain period to get to Okay. Where we are today. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> so the, very cool. So so now let's go to today and let's talk a little bit more about this commerce site. So the the e-commerce site that you have, Kathy Quo Home, is actually both consumer facing and trade facing. So I was asking you a little bit about it before we started recording to give me some comparisons onto what we felt it was like. And so we talked about Cherish, how Cherish is both consumer facing and trade facing, but of course, Cherish is all vintage product. There's not new product on there, but Cherish also handles the white glove concierge services of the buy and the sell and so forth like that, but it's all buy and sell between people. So your site is new product that a consumer, and and we also discuss how it's unlike Curated Kravit, where Curated Kravit is strictly to the trade. Re, uh, consumers can go where they can look, but then they have to contact contact a designer in order to purchase your site consumers can go and you know just on their own purchase they could or they could it could be accessed through a trade account right totally so your mom and my mom can both shop the site add to bag (laughs) check out Um, And also, you know, any interior designer and interior design firm and purchasing agent or architect can also also shop our site. The reason for it is because we as interior designers um, have sort of gone through all the different pain points of what it's like to be an interior designer. In fact, we are so obsessed with what interior designers pain points are that we actually just recently sent out a a trade survey to be like, what do you need us to do better at? Um, You know, the project management portion of it, the accounting portion of it, the follow-up portion of it, the what happens if my item gets damaged portion of it. I mean, there's like, as an interior designer, like, you know it, like you hear it, it is so painful. Like you place an order, is it going to arrive? Is it going to arrive in one piece? Like, where is it going to get shipped to? Is it going to my receiver? All of these things. So we actually have a trade login in which if you apply and you, you know, you're approved, 
um, you can log in. You have a slightly different experience, uh, user experience on our website. Um, there's basically different pricing depending on the tier that you're you're purchasing into. But like we can do all sorts of fun things like consolidate your shipments for you, hold your shipments back. If like, let's say your client is like, randomly decides to go to India for a month and you're like, oh my God, well, we're, you know, your table's arriving. What are we going to do? Um, we can actually hold your shipments for you. We can white glove, we can assemble. I mean, we have brought like, literally we have craned things in like from the third floor in like a Manhattan town, you know, townhouse. Like we've done anything and everything. <laughs> like just, just you imagine it. It's like people have asked us, like we have sawed things in half to like turn up a stair of like a Manhattan townhouse. Um, we recently just like chopped a, a giant 14 foot table down to a 12 foot table because this amazing, amazing client who we love to pieces decided to bring her 6,000, square foot home worth of stuff from, you know, um, Laguna beach to her Manhattan place and couldn't fit all of her furniture. So we were all like, we didn't like, how are we going to make this work? So anyways, we can make things work. And, um, on the other side, it's sort of like, there's that whole, you know, you place an order with a manufacturer and, um, you know, they may or may not tell you if it's on back order. They may or may not tell you if it, there's an extended back order beyond the first back order. Um, and quite frankly, it's very frustrating because, you know, you have an install date. So do we, you know what I mean? So we completely understand that. And that's why when you work with one of us, like you get a trade specialist, you get like basically an interior designer, like hand holding you through your interior design process. Like all of our people that pick up the phone that handle our live chat, they are all trained interior designers that's the biggest difference between us and everybody else okay because we get your pain points okay. before you okay. even think you're gonna have them okay okay so but I have a lot of questions in, in all of there so yeah. so oh, yeah, one she... of the things like that, that I kind of don't think I understood so when you mentioned so okay first of all all right let me set this table first and then I'll go back to what I didn't understand basically what you're explaining to us is on the trade side as an interior designer any design designer listening right now if they have an account and they get approved for an account they can go in and purchase product for their projects and what you're explaining Kathy is that that your team will handle all of the status getting the shipping for them so a designer if she goes and she orders uh, an um uh, a product from anywhere, I don't know, any any company's website. And they have to then check, okay, is that in stock? I'm going to check back later. Oh, it was back order for two weeks. Oh, I'm talking back in two weeks. Oh, it's the back order in. What you're saying is, is that when they order their product through you, that your system is set up in a way that you project manage whatever they place for you and then say, they place the order and it's back order two weeks. In two weeks, you're going to email or contact them and say your back order product is arriving or your back order product is back ordered again. That you do, they don't need to reach out to you. You're proactively as if you were part of their staff managing this end of their project 100%, for them. Okay, 100%. okay, so I get that. Okay, so now what I don't get is and okay and the other thing I understood in there was if I'm a designer and I happen to be in a, in a city and like you said you had s something craned up to the third floor of a brownstone third story of a brownstone what you're saying is is if I place an order for something and I either know that it's not getting up the elevator the freight elevator or I didn't even think about it because I just not that experienced and didn't realize I needed to think about that. When the time comes, your company will take care of whatever extra measures are necessary to get that product delivered into that unit. We will absolutely take care of those extra measures with a cost. So, of course, well, with we'll, a cost, yeah, yeah. Right, right, totally. Right. So we it's will. Not a hobby. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we will definitely like, you know, seek out the whether it's a furniture medic, whether it's somebody who like a craning specialist or some, you know, we will, okay. we will seek out the specialist, the medic. And of course, it's more her. helpful to know in the beginning and not the end. But, you know, like, you yeah. know what I always say, we all make the mistake once. I one time, oh, uh, my goodness, I don't know how many years ago it was, but, you know, measured and did custom window treatments for yeah. a unit in Manhattan. And then my yeah. installer gets there. And of course, the thing is four feet longer than the elevator you know <laughs> and he's like he calls me up he's like how the heck did you think I was getting this up to the 20th floor of this apartment building and of course I just frankly told him I hadn't given it one single thought <laughs> it's right, like I right. have no idea I designed you. this stuff you put it up I don't know what to tell you 
Yeah. So, I but now like I know better. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely particularly true in New York City. I mean, I've heard like such nightmare stories of like, I just bought this piece of artwork on Sotheby's for yes. seven figures yes. and it's larger than my elevator. Right. I can't put it on the elevator. It won't fit. Like when I tell you nightmare, I mean like yes. unframing it, rolling it up into uh-huh. like creating creases into the artwork, oh. like unrolling it, bringing a special art handler back in to then reframe it. Oh my gosh. Like, right. But what, what you're no. saying is that if a designer knows ahead as I'm going in, that these are the conditions you can quote that price and that service for them. And they don't have to have some either themselves, if they're a solo or somebody in their office, like running all around the internet, trying to figure somebody to do these things. We got your back. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that's interesting. Network. Okay. We got a whole, you live in Scottsdale. Great. We got somebody there. You're in Laguna Niguel, California. We got somebody there. Yeah. We do so much of this that we actually have an entire back end system that locates our furniture repair medics or like okay. you know, SOS supermen to come in and Okay. And so that. that's yeah. that in that regard it is a lot like Cherish in the way that they have those networks in all the each of the communities to support the interior design uh, world. So that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Now the other th- so the thing that I wanted to ask in there that I didn't understand is when you mentioned the client and maybe just I heard it wrong but it sounded like the cl- the one client you mentioned that was coming from Laguna beach that she couldn't get something up the elevator because but it sounded like you said that she brought her furniture with her so how does that tie into kathy quo home if she's bringing if the designer is moving furniture from one place to another or did i misunderstand it Nope, you're, you did not misunderstand oh. anything. Um, so she is one of our design clients. So she is a design bar client. Um, and design bars is obviously all done oh, Okay, so me. she is yeah. one of your clients that you is, do interior uh-huh. design for. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. And she, uh, she moved into this amazing pre-war building. Um, on the Upper West Side, and we consulted with her. So we're working with her on on artwork, on getting her new pieces, because obviously her pieces there are extremely large. Um, you know, she had a fourteen person dining table. That is crazy talk in Manhattan. So, um, <laughs> so we we just had to basically like work through like you know what's going where, what can we put where, and like what okay. you know what can we repurpose and things like that. Okay, so the, yes, okay, so that's different. That wasn't a designer who is one of your trade designers on the site. That's one of your direct clients because because you Correct. still do interior design in addition I to do. running this empire I do, okay. and i love it yeah i love it slash hate it no i'm just totally <laughs> you know, I, I have the best best clients in the world i i am so literally so so pleased that well you know, it's I funny because i wanted to, to ask you a little bit about that it was interesting that you just mentioned your clients um because i read that you have had robert redford as a client and Halle barry as a client and I, you know i just you know, sometimes I you have to ask the entertainment tonight question too, instead of just the business question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. What you know, I'm sure when people hear and read that, the, the first reaction, particularly for a younger designer, is how does that happen? And what is it? Is it is it really as cool to work for somebody like those stars as it seems, or is it you know, hey, you're just working with you know really you know people good, better, and different. Um, it's a combination. So you're technically not really working with them as you are working with their people. Um, I would say, I would say for the most part, um, it's more or less the same thing. I would say, believe it or not, like their people are extremely also like budget conscious as well in the sense that they're given the, the, it's, it's not like they can just be like, Oh sure. Like, I think that like an extra $50 on this would be okay. Or, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they're very sort of structured in like what they need out of this specific project. So in that sense, um, you know, it's, it's not like, Oh my God, like, I can't believe it. There's a zillion dollar budget on this. It's, it's a, it's a significant, larger budget but it's definitely not like without sort of parameters and stuff yeah, and you know definitely. you're right about working with their people because I'm just thinking about it I hadn't thought about it when I asked but we did Jim Carrey's apartment in New York City <gasps> one time Amazing. yeah we were doing that with uh, Richard Carpenter is a designer here from New York that I used to do all of his work he's he lives in Florida now and when he comes in his projects we just did a project from in Long Island this past year so when he's back and he has worked this way we still do it but he did Jim Carrey's apartment when Jim was coming to just live into town for like eight months and why I was doing a movie and Uh it was unbelievable in that regard in the regard because I remember Richard called us I think on a Monday and he needed this was a huge loft apartment and I'm going to tell you what there was probably 
there had to be 250 linear feet of (laughs) wall-to-wall draperies that were 10 feet high and he said to me he goes we can all get this project you me the rest of my team can get this project if you can tell me you can have that much drapery installed in 12 days and I was like oh my god right right. (laughs) yeah I can barely get a sliding door (laughs) (laughs) yeah oh no and we did it I said just how big is the budget because there's a lot of overnight shipping and air freight and (laughs) rush charges (laughs) right 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 Right, right. But you're yeah. right. We didn't meet Jim Carrey. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And he and he's probably he may or may not have sent you a thank you card for his curtains. Right. He might but have to Richard, way. but not yeah. to us. <laughs> <laughs> right, but right. I doubt it, though. <laughs> no offense to Jim Carrey, but I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. But anyway, okay. So I just went off on a little indulgent tangent there. So, but okay, back to Kathy Quo home. So okay, what I also love about now, now maybe you need to get me straight on where I'm directing designers are they finding because I love the design handbook which is the blog for you you actually have a blog on your site for interior designers and I loved the topics so first of all I saw that you had a whole um, blog on Marie Flanagan who is an alumni of a well-designed business I'll just say <laughs> we love her I know she's so sweet and she does such beautiful she work really is. and you Absolutely. know what smart business lady I mean yeah. honest to God I was like firing stuff at her that I hadn't even like kind of pre-checked and she just was like going with it so I was very impressed by her but so this is on the Kathy Quo site or it's on where what site I don't I'm getting a little confused about the different platforms now everything lives at Kathy Quo Quo home right it's kathyquohome.com but I believe it's kathyquohome forward slash blog I swear to god it's that simple okay um so what it is is on kathyquohome.com we -hmm. find everything we find the shop we find your design bar which is your direct interior design business and we find the blog and we so it's all there under the different things so we don't have to go to 16 places we go to one place and find anything we're looking for correct okay now, cool. you can go to a separate site that's designbar.com mm. um however um you can get to designbar.com through our main site okay and so easily. i found design handbook which is this blog for designers and i thought it was really something and i wanted to make sure that we talked about it uh on the podcast because Look, the whole premise of the podcast is to help interior designers run their businesses more profitably, but everybody that listens knows that I'm not an interior designer, okay? So I have great knowledge of the industry and, you know, tandem industry for 30 years, but it's different when you actually do the exact work that that a designer does. And when I looked at your blog, Kathy, I was very impressed at the titles. You know, you have how to talk money with your client. You have, um, you had the expose on Marie Flanagan where she talked about her firm and her design aesthetic and so forth. I even thought it was cute how to pronounce seven words in the design <laughs> field. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And guess what? Everyone in our staff is like, they're like scared to say the words. They're like, shh, 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 shh. I'm like, didn't want to be just like, <laughs> it's okay. Um, I think it was pretty funny. So, but I mean, I like the one about how to talk uh, money with your client because, you know, that is one of the things. I mean, and, and here's what I know is. If I'm in business, you know, whether it's one minute or 10 years and I'm still struggling with how to talk money with a client, you, to my way of thinking, you can't get enough information on it. I don't care. Listen, listen to the podcast for every designer that brings it up. But to me, I want it to come to me from all different places. I want everybody's take on it because there's going to be just something a little different in somebody's presentation or somebody's something that unlocks that light bulb moment for you. Right. So I thought it was really cool. Like, as like a lot of interior designers, like when they first start out, it's like, it's, there's all these embarrassing questions that are mm-hmm. like, how do I charge? Like, wh- at what point do I tell them I have no time for them? Or at what point do I right. tell them that I'm secretly in love with them, really want this project or like, it's just embarrassing. And so like, you know, we basically have put together all these like awkward sort of questions that you don't really feel comfortable asking right. your friend, your mother, or like your fellow interior design friend, because let's be honest, you're not going to go and call up Marie Flanagan and be like, Hey, do you talk about prices? Cause she's <laughs> 
she's probably <laughs> not going to tell you. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, so she will I, if you have her on the podcast, but if you just call her while she's in the middle of your busy day, she might not. <laughs> right, 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 right. But it's also sort of like you, like you get what you, your, what you learn based on who you either intern for or worked for before. So right. it's like, if you're at this specific firm and this is how they bill, or this is how they conduct their initial consultations, this is how you do it. You know what I mean? Right. So for us, we're just sort of like, hey, here's another way to do it. This is how we do it. But you, you know, this is this is just for reference. You don't have to be, you know, you right. don't. Have well, to, and that's yeah. what I love about it. And that's really what I was, I was, where I was going with it is, I could have four years experience at a particular firm, but if I'm ready to go out on my own, I don't want to just know how the person I worked for did it. I want to know how everybody did it because I want to make sure that is there a better way? Is well, it's funny because we had Amber Lewis on the show a oh, month and a it? half. Yeah about a month or so ago and she literally said to me that the week before maybe 10 days before I emailed her and asked her to be invited her to be on the show she had just found my podcast and had been in the middle of a stretch of binge listening to it I said oh how did you find it she goes I actually was googling how to invoice interior design projects <laughs> like, like she, she's like and and you know amber lewis she's got a huge firm and she just yeah. said not that i'm not invoicing my project she goes but all of a right. sudden i said is there another way that i should be thinking about doing it you know what right. i mean right. and right. so the, i love information from all different angles so you said something in there and i quarter quarter would like to call you out on it and see what you say so you mentioned in the little you know stream of a couple of questions that seem to be embarrassing and tough for designers to ask each other how do i tell a client i don't have time for them anymore what how how do you suggest i mean we're talking about that client that designer i mean that is going from probably one rooms here and there and just scaling up to full-on projects or more full service and we know that little push point where you know, you're trying to up, up level your firm to the next point, but then you have those loyal clients that are calling you back and they, they really just want their powder bath refreshed, right? Is that what you're talking about? How to bridge that line? Um, yes and no. I mean, typically it's, you know, either someone that has either sort of breached their contract where it's like beyond the scope of work now that they're requesting additional things. Like, let's say, for example, you had like a retainer for three months and now they're in month six and, you know, you kind of gave them like a little waiver for the fourth month, but really now it's month six. It's like, how do you sort of casually, but not in an offensive way, sort of bring up like, so (laughs) see, I wouldn't have realized that that would happen. So what you're saying is there's scenarios, obviously you've been through them, where you have a three-month agreement with a client that basically for three months, whatever's going on, you can talk to me and ask me. And then after that, they continue and into, you know, four and five and six months later, they're overstepping. Yes, they're overstepping or basically there's something else in the terms of the contract in which they're breaching. So say, for example, you know, we've agreed to X amount of hours for these these types of projects. And now it's basically beyond those hours. And um, we need to, you know, additionally bill some more or basically it's like, how do you how do you sort of go around those delicate situations and delicate issues? Right. Um, Is this what Kimberly Selden calls it scope creep? Is that what we're talking about where you have the scope? No, what scope? Creep. Tell, oh, tell, I think tell, it's, tell I think it's what you're describing where she says how the project has its defined parameters, but the client is always sort of pushing beyond them to get more information or other things that are not part of the agreed upon parameters of the contract. Luann, I'm going to say right out, a hundred percent of clients <laughs> are scope creeps. <laughs> Like, not, like without a doubt. I mean, like, why would you not? You know what I mean? Like if, if someone's going to respond to you on things, it, it's, it's, all, it's sort of like part of the course. It, right. It, so yeah. what is your advice? What have you done that's been effective for you? And of course, I know that you told me earlier, you have six designers working under you. So you're not only experiencing it, but you have to educate and coach the designers that work for you to not be taken advantage of in this way, because hello, that, that you're, you're paying their time for, for that that to happen. So how do you handle that, Catherine? What sort of information? It's hard, Luann. It's like not, it's not easy. It, do, it doesn't happen that often because we definitely do like sort of 
um, allow you to, I guess I'm going to use the word scope creeping. Um, we do allow you to do that to a certain extent. Um, but beyond that, I truthfully feel like we have the nicest girls in the industry. Like we will basically be like, so, you know, um, you know, let's, let's go back to our scope of work once again. Like I don't want to, you know, continue to bring up this awkward conversation, but we do need to additionally build some more. Please kindly let me know how you'd like to proceed. So, you know, I think just being like very sort of straight up and honest, um, and not getting to defensive and not getting to a point where you're like angry about it before mm. you actually approach it is, is is key. And I would say too that it probably starts with a a great um with with clear intention from the beginning what the agreements are so that Correct. you can reference them when the client starts to go outside of it. Would you agree? Right. You are correct. Okay. And yeah, and, and we try to make it as simple as and as clear as, as possible um, in our in our initial contract that we send out. So, OK, so it yep. starts with a clear agreement. And then the next thing you would say is that it doesn't need to be confrontational, but it just needs to be you know, truthfully address it just even if it's in the sweetest, nicest way that you just described, I'm sorry, but this seems to be out of the thing. Can we revisit the contract or we have to, you know, set a new contract for this particular thing or we have to stop talking about it? Like, shut up. Right. (laughs) Right. I mean, definitely not. I think some of the girls in our industry, in our team would be, would consider the term ghosting. (laughs) They'd be like, yeah, well maybe like, you know, we don't get back to them immediately. Like maybe like, you know, a day later. And, and sometimes that sort of is like, there's some, it's interesting because I think some clients are reactionary, like they're sort of like, they'll just respond quickly based on a sort of stream of thought, like they're not really actually thinking through their response. So if you actually give them a day to like really sort of like, you know, return to you with their with their response, and then like, think on it, like sleep on it for a day, like the response the following day may may actually be a much more sort of like intelligible sort of response. So you're not responding to their reaction, and then they're reacting to your reaction. and, And now you're sort of like, cycling sort of out of you know what you're really sort of supposed mm. to be focusing on if you know what I mean. So what you're saying is when one of your team members gently and politely says to a client you're going beyond the agreement what you're describing is when the client might come back right away with crazy pants reaction you're saying then you guys sort of let Don't that react. sit a day right I agree. I do the same thing I have to say when you know thankfully when you know that just you know it's not necessary that often but you know a lot of times I will exactly, you know, recognize the particular client that may have called the office, you know, you know, completely out of line or just even marginally out of line with their reactions and everything. And I will make a conscious decision often to just not return that call until the next day, because it's true. There's no sense having a conversation if somebody's inflamed and are not in a place or a position where they can even begin to accept some logic. Right. It's, you, you're just both now just and, and you just run the risk of either one saying something that's not what you, either one means to say. So I, I agree. We've I've employed that um, tactic often myself. Just let them, <laughs> you know, relax, chillax, take it back a bit and then you we'll talk it. again like grownups tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK, so so the whole point of this is that the design handbar ha, design handbook is the to the trade blog that you have. And it's a great resource for interior designers out there that can just go to your website. And in addition to seeing the shop, you know, for the all of the different beautiful items that you've curated there and you've put on the site, they also have this access for all these conversations and all these things that you've been through in your 10 years as an interior designer. And you teach your staff and help your staff navigate. And now, you know, it's a resource for for your colleagues out there to, to learn about this stuff, too. So I love it. Totally. I totally. It. And I also will say that, like, it's not just for our interior design community. I would say, like, definitely our very design savvy consumer which I would say was, is the majority of them um, also do read those as well. Mm, which um, is only helpful to every designer, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, of course, like the further you educate yourself, the easier you are um, to work with. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely for, for both of them. Yes, and I did, I did notice that the topics aren't all just business related, but I think that it's, I just, you know, wouldn't have thought, I guess I'm, I guess I'm expressing that I was surprised to find it there. And yeah. so I thought, oh, isn't that cool? Who would have thought that it would be there? hilarious? 
hilarious. Go so ahead. One of, our, one of our articles, which like is like does not have the most enticing title at all. Um, it's called How to Mix Metals. It's literally our legacy like article. Like like if Kathy Co <laughs> disappears today, like we will be known for that article <laughs> because it is, I think it's the top most referred link to get to us. Wow. Isn't that so random? So what go is the check deal out with that? that? <laughs> you know, like almost on a day-to-day basis, there are multiple questions from people that write in asking us how to mix metals. It's a real issue, Luann. Like wow. people are really concerned about this. Burning issue of the day. Yes. <laughs> and my answer is do it. Just go and do it. Just so, throw that silver in with that gold. It doesn't yeah. matter. Like no one is looking that much. <laughs> Like, I promise you. So, well, and it's true. And doesn't it, 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 the truth is that I can see why that is a very well searched uh, topic because I know, look, I'm not a designer. I do custom window treatments. And a lot of times I th- very thankfully I'm doing very lovely high end window treatments, but also too, I'm doing window treatments for Mrs. Smith who calls up and says, I need some blinds in my son's room or I need some tr- treatments for my kitchen. Right. So I'm dealing at both ends of the spectrum. But what's so funny is when I'm dealing with the, the more normal, by the way, I grew up that way. So there's no disparaging on the normal. I'm the normal person in real life. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for, I guess the, the homeowner that is not necessarily design savvy, it's true. One of the things that I find that I'm often saying to them is it all doesn't have to match. Like we don't right. have to have this exact same satin nickel because you've got it on the handle and then we have to have it here. A little mixing would be nice. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. like, Totally, and totally. so it's true. Like designers take it for granted that you know and you understand that it's in the blend and it's in the nuances and it's in the layers that creates the beauty. But a lot of time, an uneducated design enthusiast, they think it all has to be A plus B equals C because if A and B are exactly the same and they match, then C is going to be perfect. And totally, yeah. And so, I understand that from yeah. like you know just like sort of a psychological standpoint that it, like like people need these things to make sense, right? right. It's like if it's not like sort of sensible, if a plus B doesn't equal C and it actually <laughs> equals D. Like, oh my God, what like, what, do, what, like, what does that mean? So I get it. Um, another one of our amazing articles that we do really well with is how to create a design board. Hmm. And the, the, the interesting thing is this is how we create design boards. This is probably not how anybody else creates design boards. Um, but that one is highly, highly trafficked as well. Um, but yeah, if you are ever on our blog, which you should, you should go check it out. Um, I definitely read those two articles and all the other ones. Um, yes, I, I and, would and think comment. that would be. Yeah, and comment and share and yeah. ask because we definitely respond to all of them. I would think that would be insanely helpful for a designer to read how to create a design board. Because like you, like we said earlier, who cares if you already know how to do it? How does somebody else do it? That You right. could get one light bulb moment and think, oh, that's so much cooler. That's so much better. That's so much whatever or easier. Totally. God, totally. What, yeah. what if you found out it was easier? How awesome would that be? <laughs> right. the way well, you, you mean do I've it. been doing it wrong for 15 years. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, oh my goodness. Oh, that's great. All right. So, so let's go back to the e-commerce site for a moment because we we talked about the services that are available to interior designers that you will handle the project management portion of it, that you will handle the shipping and the delivering portion of it. Um, tell us about some of the vendors, some of the lines that they can look to find if they, when they come to your site, because I think you said to me that you have over 65 vendors on the site or, or something, or tell we me, do. Tell, yeah, so tell us some about of it. them are proprietary. Some we have the exclusives on, mm. um, we get them, you know, all over, we shop the markets, we shop overseas. Um, we have lots and lots of different manufacturers. Um, the proprietary ones are the ones in which we basically have developed product into, meaning we are the only ones online that carry this sofa to silhouette combination because mm-hmm. we've actually product developed with the manufacturers to do this, which is really exciting um, because we definitely want um, you know, product diversity in our assortment. And so like back to um, like the few lines that we have, like Cisco Brothers, Eloquence, Oli. I think Oli, we were one Oli Studios. If you don't know them, you definitely should. They're 
like like jaw droppingly gorgeous. Yeah. I actually personally live with a ton of Oli in my life. Um, <laughs> but Oli Studios, um, I believe we, I think us and maybe one other person are the only people that actually sell it online. Um, Cisco Brothers, we have the online exclusive for. They are made in LA, um, amazing upholstery company that um, just like literally if you think you've sat on something really comfortable, like take that to like the nth degree. It's just, it's a whole nother level um, of, of comfort. So there's an, an eloquence is also another one of those where there's a few online dealers that carry them. I think we are probably the number one dealer for them based on sort of the traffic and volume. So like a lot of times, like, you know, if you like can't find something, like we'll be able to get it for you because we are preferred dealers of, huh. Yeah. And how does it work? Um, I guess it just, you just have to be familiar with the line. But when you mentioned um, Cisco Brothers, that they were particularly known for their upholstery, how does, does somebody just trust or go by, you know, reputation that, that they like the quality and the, the feel of the sit? Or is it... I mean, I'm, how so does that people, work? <laughs> so people who are Googling for Cisco either know them or have sat on them. And Cisco's okay. been around for like, I don't know, 30 years or so. So your mom may have owned a Cisco sofa. <laughs> um, so, so it's it, more it, you, you're, you come to it probably with the familiarity of the, the quality and therefore you're not concerned about having your clients sit on it beforehand or something like that. Is that? And if you, absolutely. But if you're not familiar with the actual quality of Cisco, you're on our site and you actually land on, which is our number one selling sofa. It's called the CETA sofa. It's S E D A. Um, it is gorgeous. Um, you don't even care like who makes it. You just want to buy it because it looks so good. Right? <laughs> and, then, and then you find out that it's actually made in LA. It's a lifetime warranty on the frame. And then then the story unfolds and then you're just sort of like, wow, like I really like the price point. I like the look and, and clearly now the quality and the heritage of the brand. So um, if you know the line, you're Googling for it. But if you don't know it, you're usually buying it for the silhouette anyways. And so what happens with a company like I guess imagine uh, it's probably different uh, with, with whatever individual vendor that a designer is dealing with within your site. So, for instance, Cisco has possibly their own textiles that you have to pick A, B, or C to be on the sofa or, and then another company might have a COM program or do they all pretty much have a COM or none of them have a COM? How does that work? Oh my gosh. That's so all individual right? to the company probably, <laughs> right? I would say the majority of them do COM if they're made in the U.S. We do have a custom upholstery shop link on our site. So you can actually click on that and then you can basically go there and see everything that you can do COM on. Oh, that makes it easy. Okay. So yep. if somebody knows that, and I would think that, so tell me if I'm thinking right. So if I'm a particular designer and I'm working on a project and I'm familiar with Kathy Quo Home and I'm sourcing a lot of product from your site and then I know I want a custom upholstered sofa in addition to these other 10, 20, 30 items I'm going to do, I could just go to my regular resource for a custom upholstered sofa. But what you're saying is if I want the whole thing maybe project managed by you or like you said, I might know that a lot of designers like Marie Flanagan, we mentioned, they have the reveal where they're going to warehouse everything. So I'm going to say, well, everything else I got here. So that one thing, let me just get it through them and have them hold and warehouse everything until I'm ready for delivery. And so I, you make it easy by saying, I, all right, I don't know which vendor I want to use. I just know I want to be able to COM it. And so I could search it that way. Totally. Okay. So yeah, I mean, we, we basically know that a receiver charges you 10%, typically 10% of whatever it is that you're shipping there. Um, and guess what? They're shipping to a warehouse that is probably not climate controlled, you know, dark and, and damp and also probably with poor lighting. So when they send photos to you of yeah. what your piece actually looks like when you get it, it's, it's, you know, the quality may vary, right? So we actually include all of this. So we ship it to our storage facility, you can hold things. We do this all the time for our big clients. Um, and, and the storage fee is, is free. So, and the beauty of it is basically we can then coordinate like a one day install or a two day the install. The storage fee is free? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I How know. can you do that? 
Why? Because we, ha- we do so much volume on the transit side of it that the people that are moving our cargo is allowing us to store products for free, wow. essentially. That's yeah, amazing. it's, 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 it's the economy of volume. But, um, so like a Marie Flanagan interiors could literally have everything. We could ship everything to her. I think she's in Houston. I can't remember somewhere in, in mm-hmm. Texas, right? Mm-hmm. We could have everything shipped to a receiver, like our receiver um, in Houston, and she would basically not have to pay for it. And on the day that she's ready for the install, um, we would then just basically bill, bill them for the white glove delivery of all of it. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. So fun, right? Yeah. Okay. So now I might be asking a silly question because this is where sometimes my not knowledge, unknowledge, or un- whatever the word is <laughs> of the field goes. But if we keep talking about project manage and we're talking about when we say that we really mean keeping track of what's available, when it's shipping, when, when it's, you know, going to go to a warehouse, when it's going to come out of a warehouse, if it's even going to go to a warehouse. But if a company of a firm out there is almost every firm at this point, that seems that I'm talking to from a solo to a bigger firm is using a software program. Like my Doma studio is one of my favorites, obviously everybody Uh knows. So you're not talking about, you're now performing the function of all of that big project management. You're talking about within whatever is coming from Kathy Quo home. And you're just talking about the statuses and all that nonsense that somebody doesn't have to then individually go in and out and ask for statuses from all the different vendors that they've ordered from. You got it. Yes. Okay. We don't, um, my demo home is like, I believe that you can drag and drop things in there. My demo studio, right. You can put yourself right. in. Yeah. You can drag and drop and, and do that type of stuff. Um, that is something that we can't do, but, um, it's, uh, well, it's a whole between, other business. I mean, it's a whole honestly. other business. And between you and I, I don't think it's even that robust because you still have to do the work. You know what I mean? It's not like it's not like you don't have to call Curry to be like, "Where's my order?" No, 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 no. But I and I'm not even suggesting it from that standpoint because I'm more talking about how the you know that these other software platforms. I just think because we often on the show, I'm more, more or less clarifying for the loyal listeners that listen to every show, we often talk about those programs as project management platforms. And we, you and I have used that term a lot in Got this. It. So Got I'm it. just saying the distinction there is that basically anything that's been purchased from Kathy Quo Home, you're going to take control over and make sure that they always know what's going on without totally. their firm having to tie all the loose ends. But it's not a project client management program. Okay. Well, there's one component that I will say, like, we don't talk to your clients because that's your client and that would not be the fair thing to do. Um, but if you, there are times in which I know this happens, you know, a lot, um, where our clients literally just don't feel like typing up an invoice. Like they don't want to generate that Excel, that PDF. Um, they want us to do it for them and we gladly oblige. So, Hmm. you know, there, there are times in which it's like, you just don't have time. Like you really just want to be able to do your standard 20 markup and, but you don't really feel like having an invoice for yourself plus an invoice for your client. So you're sort of relying on us to do that. So in that sense, we are interfacing with your client without, you know, we're sending you the, mm. the, the two invoices, but you know, we're, we're, we're helping you help your clients. So to okay. Speak. Okay. All right. Well, I get a little nervous about somebody that doesn't have time to make an invoice out. I'm just going to say, <laughs> <laughs> It's right. sort of like the point of the whole thing, folks. <laughs> right, right. You're like, that should be the happy time. That's right. right. That's first. Right. <laughs> Get your money first. <laughs> right. Okay. All righty. Well, it's really a, a very interesting concept that you have here, Kath, because you really, it's so funny because so often we say identify your market and here you're, you're working both markets, both the consumer market and the trade market, but you seem to be doing it pretty pretty darn well. So yeah, yeah, very good people. And then meanwhile, you still have your own interior design firm where you're doing these fabulous projects and stuff. And so what is, let's just do a couple of minutes on your actual design firm and everything. So you're servicing the New York Metro area. I imagine you probably, um, you know, would go pretty much anywhere, but you also are doing e-design with your firm. Is that right? Correct. Mm Mm-hmm. And so tell us a little bit about the e-design because a lot of designers are getting into that now or thinking about getting into that now. Do you have, um, of the six designers working for you, do you have one or two assigned specifically like to the e-design department or how do you integrate that into your regular design firm? And, And it seems, 
I don't know. You know, you're a luxury so designer. So e-design seems a little, hmm. Well, it depends. So um, we have a um, pretty sophisticated system in which there's a, there's a brief survey you take, right? So it's similar to like a decorist or whatever. You take the survey, it immediately sort of pushes into our backend software um, Salesforce in which we can immediately identify, you know, what your urgency level is. Um, if you need this done ASAP or you're kind of just looking to around for some options, we can qualify you based on that or we can also qualify you based on sort of your budget and your scope of work. So, um, you know, right off the bat, we already know what rooms you need to get done as well as your budget and your timeline. And so that then gets filtered off to the team, um, depending on availability. Um, we also, I think on the e-design portion of it, um, there is a lot of comfort in being able to like really visualize the final product. And so we actually have, you know, pretty sophisticated computer graphics people that can basically computer generate um, your room in 3D, like with your existing product within for a fee, of course. Um, and then what's the beautiful thing is like as an interior designer, like I always say this to my girls, like you are only as good as like your, your assets that you have access to. Right. So um, the fact is that like we have access to hundreds of thousands of products and that we see them all the time, like makes us being like, it, 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 it cuts down on significant amounts of time of like seeking out products. Like mm. when somebody tells me that they want like a 68 inch, you know, headboard, that's a cream color that has like, you know, double back tufting, tufting side and back and front floating in the center. I'm like, there's only one guy that makes this out <laughs> who it is. You know what I mean? So you're not like, Oh my God, I got to look for this. It's going to be like four hours later. I'm still not finding this. So, um, that's also one of the reasons why our fees are a little bit probably higher than normal, but it's really because we get it done quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, and also because we're all trained interior designers, everybody here runs CAD. When I say CAD, I mean, literally they're not just like moving magnets around on a piece of paper. Like we are doing AutoCAD or Rhino or Illustrator with CAD plug in. So, mm. um, everything is to scale. Um, so what you get like is going to be like, it's going to fit perfectly. So, you know, it won't be like, it, it won't be a situation where we don't get it right in the very first few shots, if you know what I mean. Yes. So it's a quick turnaround for us because of our technology, um, and because of the skill set that our girls have. And so would you say that that is something to give some careful thought to if a designer out there is thinking about introducing e-design to their repertoire, that they really do consider the technology that they have backing them up? Because that, that is probably the I biggest thing, so. right? Yeah. I will say so. I mean, I am no longer a millennial, yet I only hire millennials for this reason <laughs> because they teach me things. They right. teach me things like, listen, lady, old lady, right. you can't you can't send something to somebody without a picture in it, right? So I'm like, <laughs> really? So then I start realizing it's like people really just want visual, visual cues of how it's really all going to look. So right. if you're planning on doing e-design, just think of like put yourself in your client's shoes, forgetting like your technical challenges because you can work on, you know, getting that later or hiring it out, um, you know, worry about sort of like how your client is most, what, what that user experience is going to be like, like, how do they want to receive their information? Is it over Skype? Is it over email? Is it on a mood board? Is it how, how do they want to receive it? Right. And then ultimately like what will make it the most visual for them to be able to say, I get it. Like, this is how my home should look, you know? Oh, I love that advice. I, I love that advice a lot. So give a lot of thought to the presentation of it and the different ways that a client might like it be presented. But I think what I heard you in there saying too is that it, the presentation has to be really significant. That was where your millennials are like, they, we want it to look good. We want it to see it in a picture. And you're saying you can f hire somebody to do the technical layout and make sure it all fits. But you, as your brand and as your as the principal of your firm, give good thought to how you're ultimately going to package and present that product back in an e-design. Cor correct. Um, I think that there's, I think there's like really, we also, this is actually an article that we wrote to also as a highly trafficked article. It's called, are you an interior stylist, decorator or interior architect? So, um, the, the main difference is, you know, decorators, um, may or may not have, um, traditional, I'll call it CAD skills, computer aid design skills. They may have other skill sets that are tremendous, such as, you know, fabric and frame combinations, really understanding um, window treatments or whatever it may be. Um, 
But I think ultimately it's sort of like if you're doing e-design, like your biggest challenge is making sure that it's scaled correctly. That it fits, right? Yes. Right. So that's that's the biggest thing. I think being a stylist, like working with um, somebody that's in your neighborhood or somebody that you can actually work on face to face is significantly easier if you, you know, if you don't have the the the, the CAD skills. Right, so. because you can have a sense of proportion, innate skill or talent for proportion when you're in the room, you know Correct. that, okay, that sofa that we just looked at on the showroom floor is going to be massive, let's not use it, but that might not translate to the e-design skill if you really don't have the ability to plug it in into the CAD and say, oh, it actually will fit. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. And, l- and let me show you three different iterations of your sofa being, you know, up against the south wall, the north wall, the, right. the window wall, you know what I mean? Like giving them options and, and basically ultimately guiding them down the path that you think is the ultimate best solution anyway, mm. right? Yeah, it's a good caution because on one hand, I think the way the world is going and and design is going, and it's a lot of the people. I mean, just in the last year and a half, the number of people that I've talked to uh, in the field, in the industry that have introduced e-design that weren't having it as part of their offering a year and a half ago is significant but it's a good caution and you make a good point Kathy that it's don't get into it because it's you think it's going to be easy money if you don't really have the things to back it up you could be getting into a lot of difficult expensive situations right yeah. like right returns and things like that which right. is no fun for everyone right. and truthfully there are i think enough work for you know solopreneurs or entrepreneurs or i guess interior designers um that have small firms to work in their immediate sort of within you know the immediate 120 mile radius like right. there's plenty of work if you're in right. somewhat of an urban or a metropolitan city right 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 i think right. so Yes, yes. But you know, what I've learned is, you know, like I've talked to people that are in such rural areas and they're doing interior design and it's just like, there's hardly any, I mean, what did we talk to? We talked to uh, Judith Neary. I think she has 10,000 inhabitants on the island that she lives on and she supports her design, the interior design business on that island. She's rocking and rolling. I said there's 10,000 people great. in two buildings in Manhattan. <laughs> right, 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 right. All of which are living with Ikea. So cool, you know? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> but, you know, it, like ultimately it's sort of like that client to client interface is still so, so magical. Right. And if you can continue to, you know, do that with your, with your, you know, career and, and, you know, support yourself and not do the e-design, if you don't have to, that would be my recommendation. Mm, right, exactly. So I have one last question that I want to ask you before you yeah. go. So I noticed, and I may have misinterpreted, so you're going to straighten me out. I noticed on the design bar uh, part of the site, and which is your interior design, and I think it might have been within the e-design portion of the site, that it said... Uh, get the look. It was a feature called get the look. And I think you put up projects of that you have done through e-design and then you had that little get the look. So does that mean that that's a project that your company has designed and then basically you're basically saying to everybody out there, Hey, you can just copy this whole thing. And he, these are all the components we use to do this design from your site, obviously from the uh, Kathy Kwong. I More or less. I mean, it's sort of a capsule collection, if you will. So like we have, some get the looks that are just you know the blue and gold story so it's not really so much like a um, specific interior design that we did as okay. it is really sort of you, you know a look that we adore yeah okay because um, I'm thinking wait you just like did this e-design for people and now you're basically saying and you can copy it at home too like why not do you understand <laughs> do you understand how many times people call our inst- like call all us based on our Instagram and it's like I want like literally everything in this room, like, like not, <laughs> nothing changed. Like, and I'm sort of like, yeah, but do you, are you sure? And yeah, no, like, please don't change anything. I want everything as shown in this little, I guess, what is it like one, one inch by one inch picture on Instagram. <laughs> so they're into it. But, yeah. um, well, that's yeah. another thing we didn't mention is your Instagram feed. It's really, that's how I found you. That's, I mean, that's really something else that Instagram feed it is very yeah. beautiful. It's, so it's, everybody it's, listening should really, I mean, you have to go to the website everybody listening you have to the kathy quo it's c it's k-a-t-h-y-k-u-o home.com right um there's just so much resources there so many resources there for you guys as designers but then also to check out 
this whole e-commerce site that Kathy and her team have set up and then definitely visit them on Instagram as well. I, it's, it's really, I, I admire you as a business person. I said, you know, right from the beginning, I love anybody that looks around and says, you know, I don't like the way this is and then decides to get up and figure out a way to do it a different way. I think that's just so amazing. And I love meeting people like you that, uh, that do you, that. Lillian. That is so darling of you. And I will say that a lot of it has more to do with the fact that I had no choice, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take it. Um, I will also say that you can just do kathyquo.com if you forget to do home and also okay. she's the same place. Also kathyquohome.com forward slash trade is where you can sign up right. to be a trade member. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing all of your advice with everybody today, Kathy. So fun. Thank you for having us. Yay. <laughs> My great thanks to the featured sponsor of our podcast, Kravit Inc. Of all the terrific things about Kravit, do you know about curatedkravit.com? I know you've heard me tell you all about it for this last year and a half, but have you taken a minute to really go and look and check out curatedkravit.com yet? You have to see this collection of the most unique, high-quality finished products for the home. The collection includes furniture, lighting, bedding, rugs, accessories, and more. It is so comprehensive. It features customized designs as well as unique hand-picked pieces from the global design market. CuratedKravit.com is available exclusively to the trade. That's right. No direct consumer purchasing. They have your back at Kravit Inc. And have you checked out the innovative ready-to-ship upholstery program? This is groundbreaking in our industry. Where else can you find someone that delivers custom quality furniture fast? I'll tell you where else. Nowhere else. You see, it's the combination, custom quality and fast. That is at curatedkravit.com. You can shop the site by product category, by stylized product stories, and through the curated rooms designed by the industry tastemakers. At curatedkravit.com, they are committed to making your job more efficient by providing unmatched customer service coupled with an exceptional product offering. Kravit Inc. stands firm in their mission to serve the interior design trade at the very highest level. And the last and one of the most fabulous features is the process is so simple. That's right. Design, click, deliver. Easy as that. One last thing. Kravit Inc. has a thank you to you as a listener of the podcast. If you are on the site and you are ready to make a purchase, any one purchase, you can get 10% off as their thanks to you. Enter the code CKPODCAST at checkout for 10% off any one purchase. Well, I do thank them very much, and I really do hope that you will take a moment to see how curatedkravit.com can help you run your business more efficiently. Kathy is some kind of businesswoman, and she, in fact, is my favorite kind of business person, the kind that when they see a void in the marketplace, they actually seize the opportunity and create the exact service or solution that was missing. You hear me brag on these kinds of people a lot on the show when I meet them, and we have met several in this last 18 months. A few that come to mind immediately are Sarah Danielli, the creator and CEO of My Doma Studio. Exact example needed a particular tool, a platform to manage her own interior design firm. It wasn't available, so she created it. Heather Gillette of Designer Inc. wanted to access the services of high-end interior designers and didn't want to go the traditional route, so created new decor, and from new decor came the brainchild of Designer Inc. And you have Anna Brockway of Cherish. Each of these ladies, just like Kathy Quo, needed a service or a product that wasn't out there, and they decided to go ahead, go ahead and create it themselves. And the reason why it impresses me so much is because it's hard enough to open and run any business, but to trailblaze a new path in a new business, well, that takes a particular measure of skill, of confidence, and downright guts, and I love that. 
So do yourself a favor, check out Kathy Quo Home, read her blog posts there. There are several that are truly aimed at helping you run a better interior design firm. She mentioned how to create a design board. She also has how to take better interior design photographs. There's tons of them there. I was like, you know, losing myself and finally I was like, okay, you have work to do. <laughs> All right. So snoop around the website a bit. See if maybe opening a trade account with Kathy Quo Home is right for you. She's thought of a lot of features that seem like they would be very helpful and beneficial to you as an interior designer. So, and I just want to mention if you heard it in there, we didn't make a big deal about it, but Kathy had a particular uh, little bit of advice that I thought was worth repeating. She talked about how so many, and I know from talking with you that there are a lot of you that are now venturing into e-design. And Kathy cautioned that scale is the biggest challenge when working on a space that you haven't been in. So you have all the other things, the the ordering and the um, follow-up and everything on a project that you're not right next to, but she said that scale is the biggest challenge. And she advises you to take whatever extra steps are necessary to be sure that the pieces that you suggest for a room that you haven't been able to be in will be as perfect as you envision them being for your client. Check out our show notes and our website for all of the links to Kathy Quo's site and her trade application. If you're interested, will be there. That link will be there. All righty. So, okay, before I go, big announcement. Did you hear that Kravit moved their D&D building location in New York City from the third floor to the 12th floor? I haven't been there yet, but I'll bet it is fabulous. Now, I am going because Kravit emailed me and invited me to be there for their spring event on the 21st of June from 2 o'clock to 5 p.m. And so I'm inviting all of you. I said to them, y'all are coming, but I'm bringing all my peeps, right? (laughs) So if you're in the New York metro area and you would like to get together with us from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock on June 21st at the new Kravitz showroom, please come on over. I'm sure it's going to be amazing seeing the new product, the furniture, the lighting, everything. I can't, I'm really looking forward to it. If you do come, please make sure you introduce yourself to me and let me know that you're a listener of the podcast. I love meeting all you peeps. And while we're at it, I'm just going to tell you that the... Uh, event at the Las Vegas market was nailed down actually today. So my Doma Studio and Kravit Inc. are sponsoring this event where it will be myself and Kelly Ellis. It's called Design Uncorked. And I'm going to be talking about Kelly Ellis, talking with Kelly Ellis about how to take your interior design firm to rock star level right? Like you want to know how she did it. Now, of course, we had her on the show and I asked her a lot of questions, but in person, I can just get into a little bit more, I'm just going to say. So we're going to, I'm going to pick her brain and you're going to get the benefit of it. So please, if you're planning to come to Las Vegas market, please, you know, pop in and be at this event with us Tuesday, August 1st from two o'clock to four o'clock, me and the original rock star designer herself, Kelly Ellis. Okay. So, um, also to make sure you are up on all the latest details, the easiest way is to be on our email list. And the easiest way to be on our email list is to simply text this number 444-999. And when the field opens, put in the word design biz. D-E-S-I-G-N-B-I-Z. Okay, 444-999 and put in the word design biz. It'll take you to one more screen. You'll put your email in and just like that, you'll be up on all the comings and goings of all the things, a well-designed business podcast. All righty. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Kathy Quo today. And if you did, maybe you would share it with a designer bestie. That'd be really swell. I appreciate it. And I do want to thank you. The iTunes reviews continue to come in. I am so appreciative. If you are sitting there and you personally have not done it yet, it'd be really swell and I'd be so grateful. But for all of you in the last week and a half, two weeks that have have done your iTunes reviews, thank you, thank you, thank you. Alrighty guys, have an excellent day. Thank you for joining me again today for another episode of A Well-Designed Business. This podcast is a production of Window Works in Livingston, New Jersey, your trade resource for custom window treatments and awnings. Learn more about Window Works at www.windowworks-nj.com. All of our music is original music by Room 2 Productions. Please contact us if you want to learn more about original music for your business or your events.